Liam, thank you very much indeed. And uh, uh, yeah, let's just hope that the plight of uh, our commuters uh, uh, is uh, uh, dealt with uh, as quickly as possible. Liam, thanks very much indeed for that update. Well, let's continue then our conversation on science and technology. We're getting responses from you via Twitter at Morning Live SABC, hashtag TNA Biz Brief. And uh, we've also got an audience here uh, that have been posing questions uh, to Minister. And in fact, let's go to table number nine now, where we'll find Fred Thompson, uh, who's got a question. Uh, Fred? Good morning, Honorable Minister. Uh, and it wasn't fair to not let me go to the loop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is, I know that there's a group from South Africa going to the U.S. next week or the week after uh, at the invitation of President Obama. And I was wondering if STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, is on that agenda. I think I had two questions. Should I address them? Uh, you can briefly throw the second one in as well. What was it? Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> you've forgotten your second question. Yeah. How is DST's youth info, science, and technology uh, progressing? Yeah, and I asked that question because I think it was Harvard that discovered that a two-year STEM graduate earns more money than the four-year college graduate. Uh, so I was a little bit confused when we were spending so much time talking about the PhD and the RND when we look at the unemployment rate that's going on in the country. Shouldn't there perhaps be a little bit more emphasis on STEM for those who might not be going on to the four-year colleges? Thank you. Okay, Minister. Mm. All right, well, with respect to the uh, summit, it's a summit of leaders, um, and I'm not sure what they're going to discuss, but uh, alongside the summit, there are a number of sectoral meetings uh, with leading institutions in the United States, and one of those is science. We will be uh, hosted by the uh, American Academy of Sciences, and there'll be a symposium involving uh, ministers uh, of science on the African continent, some of the uh, development finance institutions on the African continent and in the United States, as well as higher education institutions and private sector corporations. So that'll be one part. There's a symposium on business and technology, which also will involve us, uh, scientists. So there are activities that are side activities to the summit that will focus on, on science and technology and collaboration between the United States and the African continent in uh, this field. So we're quite excited at that opportunity and we would like to see greater uh, collaboration. Now we do encourage young people to uh, pursue degrees uh, in science, engineering, and technology at the undergraduate level. My department's mandate, however, is at the postgraduate level. Hence, we talk about postgraduate to a great degree. The mandate for undergraduate uh, uh, students is with the Department of Higher Education and Training. They also provide support to young people that are in the vocational, uh, and technology, technical uh, sphere. But we collaborate, the two departments. We work very closely uh, together. But our primary mandate is honors, masters, and doctoral and postdoc mm. uh, support. Well, this will be a good point, I think, to speak to some of our um, PhD students that are sitting on a table over there. I don't know if we can get a microphone. Just raise your hands, PhD students over there. A couple of questions that I have for you. Uh, uh, right. First question is, uh, why aren't a lot more of your peers following you into uh, PhD studies? What are some of the challenges that you're facing? Um, thank you. My name is Osmond Mlonyeni. I'm a student at the University of Pretoria. Um, I think one of the reasons is the potential of earning post your masters and the time you take to complete your qualification. Mm. I think that's one of the critical points that needs to be addressed, as well as um, bursaries um, that are available for PhDs. I know government is putting quite a lot of money 
But um, what you find is that with the private sector, it's either it's um, channeled to a specific cause, and it's not a pool of money that can absorb for different disciplines. So you have that scenario that takes place. So it's, it's a personal and also an institutional-based uh, situation. So there's no easy answer for that question, actually. Are you being allowed to express yourself, or are they uh, sort of channeling you towards er certain areas of study? No, I think um, if you're an undergrad and you, you intend studying, a lot of your choices are driven by your passion as well as the quality of the teaching that you receive. That has a big impact on how you direct your studies. Mm. Um, but there is some latitude in what you would want to do, but universities have their research niches, and somehow students then get channeled within that scope, but definitely I, I don't think they, they, they stifle your mm. opportunity to grow at any point. All right, is there another PhD student on your table? Yes. Okay, uh, if you could stand up. What would you want Minister to do for you and your colleagues? Oh, okay, actually I was... Uh, You've got another point you want to make? No, 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 yeah. connected to that. Okay, uh, I'm from okay. the University of Pretoria. My name is Matebo. I was actually trying to construct a question for her. Oh, okay, so, go um, for it. During my PhD, I've had the opportunity to go uh, to the USA to acquire some skills and come back home and use them, use them to expedite my research. Um, so I was wondering if they have set aside some sort of funding or they have plans in order to support other um, students to go abroad, get skills and come back and teach others and also progress well with their studies. Minister, this is something I've seen in Rwanda done yeah. quite a lot, isn't it? So my, my belief is we must provide more support for international opportunities for young people. Mm. But at the moment, we don't have the resources for that. But it's part of what we are proposing to government mm. in order to really expand the opportunities for young mm. people. Um, I think in your speech, or I read somewhere that uh, the average investment in science and technology is something like 1.77% 1, 1. of GDP around the world. Where are we on, on that scale at this stage? We are below 1%. Mm. We're at around 0 0.8. We did reach 0 0.92 several years ago, but that was because we had a very large uh, investment we were making in the pebble uh, bed modular reactor. Mm. But once government disinvested from that project, the funding for research uh, went down substantially. We also have had a reduction in private sector mm. investment uh, in, in research initiatives. So there's been a decline, but uh, government I think is really committed to supporting us. And we're very thrilled that this year, through the National Research Foundation, we're seeing a significant improvement in investment in young people. We'd like that to grow massively, but the improvement suggests there is a commitment. Can't your boss give you more money? It's not my boss, it's <laughs> Minister Nene, my colleague, and his department. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, we are working hard at convincing yeah. them yeah. Uh, about the value of investing okay. in but, science. But if he gets a message from the president, then he'll find money somewhere. Yes, I, I'm hoping <laughs> he will. All right, table number two, Palesa Masuku. Um, good morning, Minister, and thanks for the opportunity. I have two questions for you. My first question is, what is the Department of Science and Technology doing to show students, especially in the rural areas, the importance of science and technology? And my second question is, when I was at the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists in 2011, you said that you offer students scholarships or other um, funding to pursue their masters after they do their junior degree. I want to know if that offer still stands because I'm doing my second year now in pharmacy. Thank you. Okay, so it's an application that's been put through. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got uh, colleagues here, I think, from the NRF. Uh, who could probably speak to what we're doing uh, to support young people. And then I saw Dr. Matutu, I think, came in earlier. She'll talk about the rural outreach. So, 
All right. Well, let's start with the rural outreach because that was the first question. Yes. Um, Dr. Matutu, we'll start with you. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. On the um, outreach to uh, learners in the rural areas, we are doing a lot. We've got the Youth into Science strategy, which focuses on a number of uh, areas. And the key areas are supposed to be the awareness of science and technology, and um, the identification of talent, and we um, then use a number of instruments to promote science and technology. We've got our campaign, the National Science Week. We've got the science centers which are there throughout the year, and they include rural areas as well. We've got uh, the science festivals countrywide, the biggest being the um, the Sci Fest Africa, which is held in Grahamstown, and it attracts a lot of learners from rural areas. And in addition, Minister Hanekom uh, decided that we focus our technology testing in a rural village of Tofimvaba to promote education. So in that area, we do not only focus on uh, science promotion, for learners, but we focus in the entire rural village. We look at if we put on technologies which are going to advance the community, uh, what would that effect be on education? So we've got those wireless mesh network, we've got tablets, we've got uh, technologies which are going to focus on um, improving our technologies for dealing with uh, 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 toilets and all of that. Uh, Minister, I suppose that uh, someone from the NRF will proceed with yeah. the rest. Yes, okay. Dr. Maharaja. There we go, the microphone's next to you. If you could just identify yourself first. I'm Romila Maharaj and I'm an executive director at the National Research Foundation. Morning, Minister. Morning. The NRF supports students from the fourth year or honours year upwards and at the fourth year or honours level because of the large numbers we allocate block grants to the universities and a large number of those bursaries are awarded as block grants but we also have what we call grant holder linked bursaries so most of the researchers that have NRF grants do have bursaries attached to those grants, so you can also approach uh, individual researchers. At the masters and, on, and PhD level, they are competitive grants and you apply directly to the NRF or again to researchers as grant holder linked bursaries. But I must say that over the past few years, we've seen an increase not just in the number of bursaries that we've been awarding, but also we've been trying to increase um, the values of the awards because we understand that, that is a limiting factor in terms of making it sufficiently attractive for students to be able to be full-time students in particular. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Uh, interesting question that's come through on Twitter from Unati Hrodbom who says, um, Minister, what's the use of encouraging the youth to do science? Because when they finish school, you don't give them jobs. Well, this is exactly why we've started our mm. internship programs, in order to uh, support young people mm. to gain the experience, to be attractive. And what's very interesting is many of the institutions in which we place young people as interns absorb them as permanent employees. We started a very exciting initiative when I was last in the mm. department, mm. and this was to speak to these technology companies that are the technology top 100 to take on young people who were engineering and science graduates who had not found employment after two, three years since graduation. Um, it's been a most exciting initiative. 
We started with a very small number, we're growing it every year, and it's proving to be an extremely successful initiative. What's fascinating and exciting is that companies that are outside of this group of technology mm. top 100 have come forward and say, we also wish to be part of this. Mm. We want to take on young people. So there are opportunities that we're creating. And I would say to young people that they need to improve their skills at looking out for opportunities and pursuing them. What we found is many young people give up quite early on after searching uh, for opportunity. So we're trying to see if there are better ways of making them aware of the internships. We also, as government, would like to expand our internship uh, opportunities, but of course, we've created the uh, Youth Employment Incentive mm -hmm. uh, Scheme through which the private sector can take on uh, young people as youth employees in order for them to then be grounded in the workspace. Okay, all right. Uh, very quick question from David. Is this Maudaha on table number one? I can't quite read the writing. Table number one, David. If you could just stand up, say your name. You got a, a question on SKA. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Minister. Yeah. Uh, mine is a quick one. Uh, I just want to find out, Minister, uh, how long will it take to finish building the SKA? Thank you very much. All right. Well, it's a long-term project. Yeah. As South Africa, we committed to building what we call the precursor radio telescope, which is a 64-dish radio telescope, the Meerkat. That will be ready for science by 2017. The full uh, square kilometer array will only be ready in 2022. Uh, so we haven't begun building it as yet. We're still working on the design. We're working on creating um, the institution for many more partners to come into the SKA project. We're around 17 countries at the moment, and we're investing in the design phase, as well as the preparatory phase for the technology that will be necessary for a project of this kind. So we will be building over the next many years. I would suspect that the huge design phase will be completed by the end of 2015. I think by 2016-17, we must begin the implementation. And we have promised that 2022-23 will be ready for science on the SKA. All right, so SKA, one of our huge projects that yeah. uh, sharing with the rest of the world. Um, but more on that in science and technology in general as we continue this conversation with Minister Naledi Pando right after this. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.